Welcome dear students, my today's topic is soil profile. Examination of a vertical section of soil as seen in a roadside cut or in the walls of a pit dug in field reveals the presence of more or less distinct horizontal layers. Such a section is called a profile and the individual layers are called as horizons. Every well developed undisturbed soil has its own distinctive profile characteristics. Soil profile and its horizons. The soil forming factors result in the formation of layers within the soil from the surface down to varying depths. The soil profile study is a key to understand the processes that have operated in soil development and is a means of determining the types of soils that occur and also provides basis for their classification. A soil profile can be as little as 10 cm thick in immature soils and as deep as several meters in tropical areas where the climate is conducive to rapid alteration of the underlying rocks to form the soil. All the weathered material within a soil profile constitutes regolith. The upper horizons of the soil profile which have most weathered portion is called a solum, while as the least weathered portion of the regolith that lies directly above the soil consolidated bedrock is called a saprolite. Each soil type has at least one, usually three or four horizons. These horizons result from the process of chemical weathering, alluviation, alloviation and organic matter decomposition. A soil horizon is recognized from other horizons above and below by characteristics which can be observed or may be measured in the field. The criteria normally used are organic matter content, color, texture, structure, consistence, presence of cutin, cementation, stooniness, paints, carbonates, soluble salts, artifacts and biological features roots and pH value etc. The boundaries between horizons are described in terms of clarity, depth and thickness. The uppermost layer or horizon of a soil profile are darker in color than the lower horizons. This difference is due to the accumulation of organic matter that results from the decay of plant roots and of other organic residues incorporated into upper soil layers. Also weathering tends to be more intense in upper horizons than in the lower horizons. Some products of weathering have been leached out of these layers which are collectively termed as A horizons. The underlying layers contain comparatively less organic matter than those near the surface. They are characterized, however, by an accumulation of varying amount of substances such as silicate clays, iron and aluminum oxides, gypsum and calcium carbonate. Soil horizon designation has served a very useful purpose during the past century since Doko Chow first labeled the visible layers of the soil with letters as A, B, C. However, there is disagreement of opinions about the use of these symbols. As some pedologists follow the Food and Agriculture Organization guidelines with local modifications and some did not use them at all, as the soil profile is an expression of only two dimensions of the soil body. And the pedologists prefer to use soil as a three-dimensional body, the pedon. The soil profile results from the dynamic interactions of one or more soil forming factors such as physical, chemical or biological factors and results in the formation of a sequence of horizons. The characters, composition and arrangement of these horizons are distinguishing features of different soils which enable soil classification and mapping. The ABC system of soil horizon designation has been used in many publications from the beginning of the 20th century, but many modifications have been added to it from time to time. In 1962, the Soil Survey of America extended 
the master horizons by including letter O, far horizons of organic material. The sea horizon was referred to as a mineral horizon or layer excluding bedrock and the consolidated bedrock beneath was designated as R horizon. Both these subdivisions of the soil profile were symbolized and were ranked as master horizons. Taylor and Pohlin in New Zealand adopted OABC horizons as master horizons and added G horizon to this list. International Society of Soil Sciences IEEE accepted these designations with reservations for G and R horizons. One major innovation which IEEE included was the E horizon. The US Soil Survey staff in 1981 have produced soil survey manual in which the O, A, E, B, C and R master horizons are used. Now we discuss these master horizons and layers. Generally there are 5 to 7 master horizons in the soil profile recognized in different soils. However, not all soil profiles contain all these horizons and differ from one location to another. The master horizons and their subdivisions represent layers which show evidence of change and some layers which have not been changed. Now we discuss O horizon. The O or organic horizon is found in the soil formed under forest vegetation. It is composed mostly of vegetation that has fallen to the ground and the remains of animals such as insects causing it to be dark in color. It comprises of organic material at various stages of decomposition and is most prominent in areas where there is the accumulation of ample debris fallen from the trees. The mineral fraction in O horizons generally constitute less than half the volume of the soil. However, in certain cases, the O horizons are composed entirely of mineral matter. Some scientists also designate letters L, F and H layers for an organic horizon. These layers largely represent different degrees of decomposition of organic matter. The L layer representing the little layer formed of recognizable plants and animal remains, followed by the F layer or fermentation layer usually consisting of a mixture of organic matter in different stages of decomposition and the H or humus layer consisting largely of humified material with little or no plant structure visible. In some cases, such types of soil horizon is saturated with water for a long period of time or had been saturated in the past but are now artificially drained and generally accumulate iron, clay, aluminium and organic compounds, a process called as alluviation. But in other cases, they may have never been saturated. Now we come to A horizon. A horizon is composed of more or less intimate mixture of mineral and organic matter and being a surface horizon is the zone in which most biological activity takes place. It is the mineral horizon that is formed at the surface or below the O horizon. It exhibits elimination of all or much of the original rock structure and show either an accumulation of organic matter thoroughly intermixed with mineral fraction or shows properties resulting from cultivation, pasturing or any other such activity. The A horizon is an important part of the soil because it is a source of plant nutrition and contains majority of the plant roots. Soil organisms such as earthworms, potworms, arthropods, nematodes, fungi and many species of bacteria and archaea are concentrated here, often in close association with plant roots. This horizon is also referred to as biomental. Now we discuss E horizon. These are the alluviated mineral horizons formed by the loss of silicate clay, iron, aluminium or some combination of these, leaving a concentration of sand and silic particles. These horizons exhibit elimination of all or much of the original rock structure and are generally found in older well-developed soils. An E horizon is most commonly differentiated from an underlying B horizon 
by color or chroma, coarser texture or by a combination of these properties. In some soils, the color of the E horizon is that of the sand and silt particles. But in many soils, coatings of iron oxide or other compounds masks the color of the primary particles. An E horizon is most commonly differentiated from an overlying A horizon by its lighter color and less organic matter. An E horizon is commonly near the surface below an O or A horizon and above a B horizon. Now we discuss B horizon. The B horizon is the alluviated subsurface horizon underlying O, A and E horizons and is commonly referred to as subsoil. It contains mainly silicate clay or minerals such as oxides of iron and aluminium with gypsum and silica and leached out organic matter, hence called zone of accumulation. This horizon shows removal or addition of carbonates and coatings of sesquioxides resulting in higher chroma. In some soils, the B horizon results purely from weathering of the underlying rock, whereas in other soils, this weathering is supplemented by the translocation of materials from overlying horizons. Thus, the B horizon needs to be inspected carefully in order to understand the genesis of the soil. In some soils, the B horizon is enriched with calcium carbonate in the form of nodules or as a layer. This occurs when the carbonate precipitates out of downward moving soil water or from capillary action. B horizons may have a number of different subscripts indicative of the nature of the materials that have moved into the horizon. For example, BH indicates the translocation of humus into the horizon and BS the translocation of sesquioxides. These subscripts will vary according to the nature of the soil component that has accumulated but also with the system of nomenclature of the soil type. Now we discuss C horizons. C horizon constitutes the transition layer between the actual soil and parent bedrock. It is less weathered than the upper horizons and contains partially weathered parent material of the bedrock or sometimes the materials transported by glaciers, wind or water. This horizon is little affected by pedogenic processes and lack the properties of O, A, E and B horizons. Most of such horizons are mineral layers, but some silicaceous and calcareous layers such as shells, coral and diatomaceous earth are also included in this horizon. The material of sea horizon may be either like or unlike the material from which the solemn has presumably formed. It generally possesses various sized chunks of the rock below surrounded by smaller bits of rocks and clay weathered from those chunks and is generally outside the zone of major biological activity. Some of the original rock is intact but other parts have been chemically changed into new minerals Included as sea layers are sediment, saprolite, bedrock and other geologic materials that are moderately cemented. Now we come to R horizon R layer. This layer is also called as D horizon in some soil classifications. Constitutes underlying cemented and consolidated bedrock or sometimes the sediment from which overlying horizons are have developed. The depth from the surface to the R layer depends on the interrelationships between the climate, the age of the soil and the slope. Granite, basalt, cartas, limestone and sandstone are examples of bedrock designated by the R layer and the soils formed in C2 will exhibit strong similarities to this bedrock layer. Now we discuss W horizon. It represents water layers within or beneath the soil. It includes permanently frozen water layers as well as unfrozen waters. However, 
shallow waters, ice and snow above the soil are not included in this layer. Now we discuss transition horizons and subordinate distinctions. Generally two kinds of transition horizons are recognized. In one, the horizons dominated by properties of one master horizon but having subordinate properties of another. These are represented by two capital letters, for example, E, B, B, E, R, B, C. The first of these symbols indicate that the properties of the horizon so designated dominate the transitional horizon. For example, an A, B horizon has characteristics of both an overlying A horizon and an underlying B horizon, but it is more like the A horizon than the B horizon. In some cases, a horizon can be designated as transitional even if one of the master horizon to which it presumably forms a transition is not present. For example, a BC horizon may be recognized even if no underlying C horizon is present. Horizons with two distinct parts that have recognizable properties of the two kinds of master horizons indicated by the capital letters are the second kind of transition horizons. The two capital letters designating such combination horizons are separated by a virgule like E virgule B or B virgule C. In addition to these, many other subordinate distinctions are recognized within master horizons to designate specific material accumulations and add necessary details to each horizon. The distinctions are denoted by suffixes subscript to the master horizons. Like the common suffixes used for these distinctions are highly decomposed material is represented by a suffix A like OA used to indicate highly decomposed organic material with a fiber content of less than 17%. Then we have intermediately decomposed organic material. This is suffixed with E, for example, capital O with small e, used to designate moderately decomposed organic material with fiber content 17 to 40 percent. And then we have slightly decomposed organic matter suffixed with O with small i, used with O to designate least decomposition of organic matter with fiber content more than 40 percent by volume. Then buried genetic horizons are suffixed with small b used in case of mineral soils to designate identifiable buried horizons with features developed before burial. Then concentrations or nodules suffixed with c are used to designate soils with accumulation of cemented concentrations or nodules. The cementation is brought about by iron, aluminium, manganese or titanium but not by silica, dolomite or calcite. Then physical root restriction zone is suffixed with D, is used to designate non-cemented root resting layers in naturally occurring or man-made sediments like plopanes, dense balls, tills, etc. Then frozen soil or water is fixed with single F, indicated a horizon with permanent ice, however not used in case of seasonally frozen layers. Then dry permafrost is fixed with double F, indicate a horizon with temperatures constantly below 0 degree centigrade. Then strongly glowing suffix is G. This symbol is used to indicate reduction or removal of iron with water saturation and have redox concentrations and chroma 2 or less than 2. Then alluvial accumulation of organic matter is fixed with small letter h and is used with B horizons to indicate the accumulation of alluvial organic matter and sesquioxides which coated sand and silt particles. Then accumulation of gyrocyte is fixed with J. Gyrocyte is an alteration product of pyrite resulted due to oxidizing conditions and generally has chroma of more than 6. Then cryoturbation is fixed with JJ is evidence of cryoturbation indicates 
irregular and broken soil horizons, boundaries, stored rock fragments and broken layers of organic matter. Then cementation is fixed with small letter M is used to indicate more than 90 percent of the continuous cementation. In addition to above, many other suffixes are used to indicate specific accumulation or activity in the soil such as accumulation of carbonates by K, sodium by N, of silica by Q, silicate by T, residual sesquioxides by O, gypsum by Y, tillage, disturbances by P, alluvial accumulation of sesquioxides and organic matter by S, etc. Dear students, today we discussed about soil profile and its various horizons. We also highlighted about transition horizons and various subordinate distinctions in soil profile. I hope this discussion will help you in understanding soil profile. Thank you.